Hello everyone, it's Jan Bedell, the Little Giant Steps Brain Coach. Welcome back for this week's Brain Coach Tip. Over the last 20 plus years, I've seen thousands of families incorporate the neurodevelopmental approach to life and see amazing results. I've seen frustrated parents become encouraged and children that didn't think they were very smart realize a new confidence in themselves. My goal today is to equip you with resources and the reassurance that your child's functional ability can change and God can use you to make it happen. I want to ask you to please share the link to this podcast with your friends and family. You just never know when you might be the link God wants to use so another family can get the help they're praying for. Our topic today is homeschool success with your struggling learner. You know, it seems more and more children these days have some sort of learning inefficiency. It's estimated that one in five U.S. children suffer from a learning challenge or a learning struggle. So you're not alone if you have this struggling learner at your house. As you may have already experienced, educating a child that is struggling academically, emotionally, or behaviorally can be a real challenge. Sometimes when you're out there seemingly alone as a homeschool mom, you can even start to doubt yourself and wonder if you're equipped for the job. After all, some educators may have told you that you should leave that to the professionals and let them handle it. Let me assure you, your precious little one is just in the right place at home. Or if you're just considering homeschooling your child that's struggling, I want to highly encourage you to do so. Here's some examples of why educating your child at home is the best thing to do. One is, oftentimes the school system recommends more one-on-one instruction. They bring in an aid or they send them to an extra outside class with fewer kids in it so they have more one-on-one. Well, I say, what better place to receive that extra attention than at home where love abounds? It's really the best place. Some people even recommend that you get a label. I say, is it better to have a label or to find out what's causing all those symptoms that might get them a label? Because you know, most of the labels out there are really symptomatic. You have a certain number of check marks on a list and they give them that label. Well, that doesn't do much for working for the root cause of it and taking care of it so they don't have those symptoms anymore. We found that when parents are equipped with the right information, the sky's the limit to where their struggling learner can go. To give you some real hope for you or your child's future, I want to share with you why I'm so passionate about getting the word out about the neurodevelopmental approach to life. It boils down to one hyphenated word, life changing. It's how John went from a first grader saying, I'm not a very smart little boy, to strutting out of my office after graduation from our program saying, I am cured of dyslexia. And he was. He didn't have the dyslexic symptoms anymore. The neurodevelopmental approach is responsible for Daniel going from not reading at age 14 to graduating on time with his peers and making a 3.8 in college. He was very smart, but his brain just wasn't working for him right. And that can change. It's how Aaron was able to get off Ritalin and function well after about nine months of neurodevelopmental intervention. It's how John T. was able to raise his ACT score from a 14 to a 20 in just three months' time, and he was able to accomplish his dream of going to college. It's why Daniela, who went from a defiant and defeated eight-year-old to what her mom says is a confident, positive, and a total advocate of the neurodevelopmental approach used by Little Giant Steps. Another example is David, who was diagnosed at nine as having pervasive developmental delay. This is a wide-reaching label and has a horrible prognosis. He now, defying all odds, lives on his own, drives, has a full-time job, and enjoys life, not what they predicted and told mom to expect. 
Many of you will be able to relate to Jonathan's story. Mom writes this. When we first met Jan, Jonathan was really struggling in his schoolwork. As a third grader, he couldn't read well, couldn't spell anything, and was forgetting his alphabet. He could hardly copy from the whiteboard, and his writing was not smooth or legible. Emotionally, he was insecure, shy, and very down about himself. He hated schoolwork and didn't want to play with his three other brothers. After two years of hard work and determination, Jonathan is finally a different person. He is in the sixth grade and reading on the eighth grade level and loves to read. He's spelling and remembering. School is enjoyable now and he does very well. He can copy from the board. He's making straight A's in seventh grade math and really likes it. He now laughs and plays games with his brothers and friends. He's become outgoing and confident. I'm not going to tell you that it's not without work that these kinds of results happened. These families got the program, they did the work, and they got the result. And it's results like this that made me want to create neurodevelopmental curriculum like the Early Learning Foundations where three to eight-year-olds can get a good foundation in math, but they can get their brain organized, their processing up, and really make strides in their development of their brain so that any curriculum after that will work well. It's why I created developmental foundations for seven-year-olds and older. This product added to your regular curriculum can help the child's brain get organized. You can use it for four to six months, and they're working on lower level brain organization, their short term memory, both auditory and visual, and really getting their brain up to speed. You will see amazing things with their reading and with their math with this kind of program. We also have memory and motion, which is for the older crowd to keep their brains sharp as well, because when you work with your brain and stimulate it, it functions better for you. I just want to encourage you to visit our sponsor, littlegiantsteps.com, and take action. Take advantage of these life-changing products and programs and change those frustrating homeschool days into ease and productivity and happiness. Let me give you an analogy that may help you relate to what we're talking about here. Do you remember the old dial-up connections of the internet. If you're not old enough to remember that, you might remember the DSL or the slow internet. And you might make the correlation, is your child's brain acting like a computer on a slow connection? That is, they struggle academically and socially and they're not able to reach their full potential that you know that they have in them. They have trouble remembering daily activities, chores, and personal hygiene. They might know something one day and you think, oh yes, they've got it. But the next day, they don't even know that it existed. And one of the most frustrating things is they can't seem to follow directions, either spoken or written. You might even suspect that they should have a learning label because they have so many inefficiencies going on and wonder what is a parent to do. Oftentimes parents think, oh, if I just buy another curriculum, that will fix it. Well, do you want to buy another curriculum that's expensive? Or do you want to fix the root cause so that these academic successes could be attained with any curriculum? What we know is that the brain has plasticity. That means it can change and grow. And you can help that same brain become like a computer hooked to a high-speed internet or even Fios. The difference in function is huge. Addressing the root cause is what we teach in the Brain Coach Tips. I just want to encourage you to listen to some of the previous episodes because I'm on 24 now. They will help you identify many of the root causes of issues you're dealing with. Like in number two, the neurodevelopmental approach gives you a broad overview. I encourage you to go back and listen to that one. The neurodevelopmental approach to life is just that. I found it for my daughter when she was 15. I've worked with people that are 50 or 60 just to help their reading comprehension. 
my other daughter and I have used it for our infant and preschool grandchildren. It's even been used for stroke victims. Why is it that it can be used for all these different ages? It's because it's rooted in the brain. How do you make the brain work more efficiently? You do it by identifying what the root cause is and stimulating the brain so it works better in that area. It builds connections. It's kind of like not having to go through a detour anymore when you're going down a road, but being on a super highway. In podcast number 17 and 18, I help you find the root causes for reading and math difficulties. And in podcast 15 and 16, we address attention issues. You can find answers for sensory challenges in podcast number 20, 21, and 22. We talk about the tactile sensitivities, the auditory, and the visual in those podcasts. Today, let's discuss some of the ways to make your home a no more tears learning zone. After all, parents can be the key to breaking free from learning challenges and even the many labels that are littering the education landscape. First, let's look at the importance of giving the child input instead of the frustrating experience of expecting so much output all the time. Our curriculum is basically output based. It has fill in the blank whether it's multiple choice or just a blank or writing an essay or whatever, that is all output. And oftentimes we say, do it quickly. Like for instance, with math facts, how do we usually teach? We say teach math facts. We give them a drill sheet that's full of a hundred problems. First of all, it looks a little overwhelming to them when they see all those problems. And then you get your timer out and you say, do this more quickly. Well, how are they supposed to do it more quickly if they don't have it in their brain well? The other way that you work on it is you get out these magic cards. And you know they're magic because it has 6 plus 2 and you're expecting a magical answer of 8 to come out of their brain. Again, how is it going to come out if it's not in there good? I'd love for you to explore the rapid recall system by Little Giant Steps. With that program, they see, hear, say, and write five math facts 14 times a day, and it only takes six minutes. A minute here, a minute there, two minutes here, two minutes there, and all of that is input. Out of the 14 times that they get that information, only two times out of the 14 are they asked for information out until they've had a whole week of exposure that's 60 on each one of those problems. And what are the chances they're going to know it on that speed drill after that? Very high. So look into rapid recall. There's addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division so that they can have mastery of those math facts. Another strategy that you can use to change the atmosphere from negative to positive is to check all the answers that are correct. Have you ever thought about it? Usually what gets the attention on the page is the ones that are wrong. If you just turn that around and put a big check mark or a star by everyone they get right, they'll feel really good about it. And then instead of just handing them the paper and telling them to fix it, help them with the ones that were wrong. Because what they just told you by their output not being correct, they need more input. It makes a huge difference in the atmosphere of your home when you use this technique. Another area of concern for families is when the child just doesn't seem to see correctly, even though his eyes check out to be 20-20. You may have these kinds of symptoms happening at your house. The child skips lines. They miss little words when they're reading. They look at the first couple of letters and guess at the rest of the word. And you know instinctively when he can't write on the line or give you good eye contact that something is wrong. Yet, his eyes are checking out 2020. You know there's more to it than just acuity. The 2020 says, I can see up close, I can see far away. But vision is in the brain. It's what is the brain doing with that information that comes in? You have to look at the convergence of the eyes, 
the way the eyes are working together when they come in and when they go back out. You have to look at their central detail vision. How is that developed? In the Neurodevelopmental DVD, you can find ways to help with the central detail vision, as well as on the website, there's something called pinhole glasses. We found that that cuts out the peripheral and helps develop that central vision. So you might look at that too. Since we said one in five U.S. children are having learning struggles, we have to ask ourselves, is there some cultural practice in America that's robbing our children of their full potential? I have to say yes. There's many ways that this is happening. One is with all the gadgets we put our infants in. But the other thing is we do a lot of visual, visual, visual these days. You know, everything seems to be visual. And we're not developing that auditory like we need to. That's causing a number of problems. You have to have a good auditory short-term memory to be able to handle phonics well. And phonics is the way most homeschoolers decide to teach reading. It's a fabulous way to teach reading unless your child doesn't process well. In Miranda's case, on the parent report, this child had been on a neurodevelopmental program for about a year, and the mom writes, she's finally able to use phonics. Well, she had been doing five different phonics programs before this, and she still couldn't use phonics, but now that her brain was working more efficiently, she could use the phonics that she was taught. I just want to encourage you, if phonics is not working well, look for the root cause, and you will typically find that it's low auditory processing. When you fix the processing, the phonics works well. You can get a free test kit for auditory and visual processing for little guys and anyone of any age on the Little Giant Steps website. Another thing that really affects struggling learners is they get stressed when they're in a testing situation and they can't remember or find what they know. And you know they knew it, but they just can't find it. We believe it has something to do with dominance. That's the storage of information by one of the eyes, one of the ears. You're, you're looking with two eyes, but your brain is storing with one or the other. If they're storing with the wrong one that's not on the same side as their hand, they often go into their subdominant. That's where their emotions are, and they can't find what they need. You know, when you go into a library, there's a system. You know, everything is organized, and uh, you go through, the, every book is processed, and it's on a shelf right where it's supposed to be so that you can get that information. Well, the same thing happens with your brain. You have to have it organized processed, and put in the right place to bring it back out. In the Dyslexia podcast, I teach how to test for this processing. If you're visual, it'd be better to get that same information from the Neurodevelopmental DVD, but you can also get it from the podcast. Now, how can you help if this situation is an issue? One of the things you can do is to sit on their dominant side. So if they're right-handed, you're going to sit on their right side and talk into their right ear when you're giving instructions to them. When they're doing audiobooks or bringing in things, um, they can just put the earbud only in their right ear. Now this is for everything that's spoken. It's not for music. If you find that their visual dominance is off, they can wear an eye patch while they're doing their academics up to about four hours a day, and there's some prerequisites. Their convergence needs to be able to work well because you just don't want to patch a weak eye. So check that first and make sure. That's also in the podcast. If you have a child that's having trouble remembering their math operations, you know, how do I do multiplication? How do I do division? I recommend the product Visual Circle Math. It's a new neurodevelopmental innovation on the Little Giant Steps website. This is a downloadable product for those that are in our international audience. This is going to take a child from kindergarten all the way through fourth and most of fifth grade as far as the operations and it gives you a specific way of teaching it to them visually because 
that is the best way that operations are stored. And so we're going to give that to them visually. So it's going to give you a script to tell you exactly what to say, problems that you're going to practice, and then daily review of all those previous concepts so that they don't lose it. We recommend that you do math with your child. Short periods of time, up to less than 10 minutes, 10, 12 minutes, and you do a problem, they do a problem. You do a problem, they do a problem. You will be amazed at how this will change this struggle, that especially if they don't like math, to a really wonderful experience where they're getting the input they need and they're able to bring it back out. Helping you to reach far beyond limits of labels, learning struggles, and their negative effects is our goal at Little Giant Steps. You can open a brilliant future for your child through understanding how the brain works or why it's currently not working so well. It can cut down on a lot of frustrations when you have that information and then you're empowered to do something about it. I want to encourage you to stay tuned where you will receive more Brain Codes tips to make life and learning easier. Next week, the topic is Special Needs Homeschooling 101. You know, if God is calling you to educate your child with special needs at home, He will equip you to do it. I have watched thousands of moms with no other education training Take this neurodevelopmental approach to life and create the atmosphere to change their child's life. And you can do it too. Until next week, it's the Brain Coach signing off and reminding you that neurodevelopment is a dynamic approach to life at any age. So, think differently. The solution is not in the problem.